Hi, my name is Chris. In this video I'll be talking about a high performance crystal radio that we use for competition and DXing. Uh, it's an ultra high performance uh, radio and we'll be getting into the details of how it was made and how it's tuned, that kind of thing. As an introduction, crystal radios don't use any uh, power other than what they receive in the antenna. So they're <clears throat> a challenge to, uh, to build so that they uh, can actually pick up distant stations. Uh, I'll be going through the different parts of the radio and uh, first we'll talk about the antenna and ground system which are very important to these radios. Okay, so here's the crystal radio antenna holding in my hand. It's a 14 gauge stranded copper wire and it runs up to the top of this oak tree about 90 feet up and then it runs over to the top of this other oak tree. So all in all there's about 200 feet of antenna wire. Then it comes over along the fence to this pole and it runs up this pole to a weight and pulley that you can see up top here. Weight and a pulley and I'll show you what that's for in a minute. So then the antenna feed-in wire comes from the top of that pole over to the house here into my uh, shack window and it plugs in with a banana jack plug right here. What that allows me to do is from inside the house I can push on this plastic rod and eject this banana plug from the window and the weight on top of that pole and pulley then pulls it 20 feet away from the house so that I don't have to come outside in a lightning storm and get electrocuted or wet. It's a safety feature. If you're running wires from the top of tall oak trees into the house, you need to get rid of them real quick. Okay, next, grounds are really important on crystal radios. They're as important as the antenna. Fortunately, I have a cold water pipe uh, feed into the house, uh, copper, which makes an excellent ground, so I clip my ground lead onto this cold water feed pipe. And uh, it's a pretty low resistance ground. So uh, really important for crystal radios. The radio has four basic subsystems. The antenna tuning unit, the bandpass filter, the detector stand, and the audio output processing which is um, a matching system, an amplified speaker, uh, and this is a cone speaker amplified. And I got a couple of headsets down here for listening, unamplified. In addition to those units that we just discussed, the antenna tuner, the bandpass filter, the detector stand, and the amplifier. We have cone speakers along the top of the listening room ceiling. So I can listen to the crystal radio unassisted from my chair. Here's a close up of the bandpass filter. It's simply a coil, a variable capacitor. It's high Q and it's got a pickup coil, this blue wire around the edge for feeding a frequency counter that I use to see what frequency it's at. It's a 6 to 1 reduction on the tuner dial for accurate tuning. Okay, this is the antenna tuning unit. It has a 6 to 1 reduction tuning dial. It's got a worm gear drive zero backlash coil orientation adjuster. It has a multi-gang variable capacitor. Uh, the hookup or the schematic is series parallel. It's got a trimmer capacitor to calibrate the dial. A ground antenna hookup. 
So that's the antenna tuning unit. This next unit is the detector. Again, six to one reduction drive on the tuning. It's got a volume pot. It's got a pot to put some resistance into the micro ammeter so I don't peg the needle when I'm tuning. It's got a differential capacitor to change capacitive loading. It's got uh, two diodes, which are selectable from the front panel, diode A or B or both. Uh, it's got a trimmer cap, a three gang variable capacitor for tuning, a contrawound coil. Coil is wound with Litz wire for low re uh, resistance at the frequencies that we're interested in. The form is PVC, I'm sorry, polystyrene, which it has a very uh, uh, high dielectric constant. In other words, there's low RF losses. In fact, this is all stood off. You can see the capacitors stood off the base with plastic, so there's no RF losses. It's got a silver contact switch to select high and low band. So there's a lot of stuff. Okay, finally, let's look at some of the audio output stuff. This is a processing box. Inside here is a multi-tap transformer. I can select uh, which uh, transformer reduction with the switch to match the impedance of the audio device that I'm driving. Here's a switch that loads in different amounts of capacitance to sort of uh, taper off some highs and stuff like that. I can switch various amounts of, of capacitance into the circuit. Here's a volume knob. Uh, this switch bypasses all of this processing to go from the input jack straight to the output jack. This is a switch for my wife. It's marked yellow and when she wants to turn the stuff off when I'm not home she's allowed to touch the yellow switches but nothing else. And uh, Here's a little battery-powered guitar amplifier that sometimes I feed just for general listening. And here's my best headphones. These have uh, sound-powered elements that I retrofitted into the headband. And these uh, are used, were used in World War II by the Navy. They were called deck uh, talkers, I believe. Anyway, they're high-efficiency uh, uh, transducers. Uh, about 8k resistance 8k ohms resistance um, they're balanced armature uh, anyway they're what what they are is they're high efficiency transducers that take very low power input and effectively or efficiently convert it to audio out okay so let's uh, tune in a station we'll start with the antenna tuner we'll tune it up to 1230 1230. We'll take the bandpass filter, tune it to 1230, and then we'll take the detector, tune it to 1230. Notice the needle as we get it tuned in to a frequency. Okay, now watch the needle swing as I turn this dial either way off the center frequency. Notice how much the needle swings per the amount of dial change. That's a measure of the sharpness or selectivity. Same thing on the bandpass filter. It's very sensitive. A small change will swing the needle quite a bit. Also, watch the coupling. As you slide this back and forth, changing the coupling between the coils, the power to the detector changes because the impedance is changing. Look, as I bring this coil closer to the antenna coil, the needle falls down again. So there's a sweet spot right in here where the power's mag power transfer is maximized because the coupling or the impedance matching is optimized at that location. See, as I move it closer, the power drops off. Okay. I can also affect that change by rotating this coil on the antenna unit. Watch the needle fall off as I rotate the coil out of position. There, it's starting to back off now. Okay. 
in fact, as I go to, well, let me swing it back around the other way. Okay, there's full coupling. Now watch the needle start to fall off as the coil position changes. There goes the needle. As soon as they get to perpendicular, there's no energy transferred. It's zeroed out, it's nulled out. So that's another way I can change the coupling. Why is that important? Because if it's over coupled, the selectivity falls off. In other words, you can hear multiple stations at the same time. I'll demonstrate that next. Okay, who's listening to two stations at the same time? AM 790 and AM 850. Because I'm over coupled. Banged up, we're not winning. And Barry Sanders obviously one of the great running backs of all time, but Barry got to that point in Detroit where he said, where are we going here? Like, I, I just don't want to do, this isn't fun anymore. Systems in the, on military bases uh, for a small company. Well, there's a lot of military bases around here. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> it's not a bad place to be. Nope, All right, so our two guests, two military gentlemen, David Dahl and Tom Thresher. I want you to take this one. I've heard this so many times. I've been promoting. Next, we'll demonstrate tuning into uh, WRVA uh, up in Richmond during the daytime. Uh, it's kind of hard to get on a crystal radio because right close in uh, proximity is 1110 which is a very local, very strong kind of station, so it's hard to separate the two out. But let me demonstrate just picking up WRVA on 1140. You're not so bad in the ads. Thank you. It's not a series with Dr. Tim Lambert, Senior Pastor of Christian Embassy International Church in Chesapeake, Virginia, and Founder and Director There's of the Healing Rooms of Tidewater. That's 1110. It's real close. It's hard to get rid of it. And you want to have the worst but radio ads. Exactly. We dominate our here's competition WRVA. in price, service, and quality. So I thought I'd throw them a bone in the so radio have pretty good selectivity. So they wouldn't feel so bad. Always thinking. Part of that's due to having this bandpass filter, search. high Q okay, bandpass filter. It's got no loading. It's simply a lift coil and a capacitor, so there's nothing to drag it down. There's no ground or antenna. There's no diode. It's just a standalone bandpass filter. It really helps uh, the selectivity. I've been warning people for years that the big Okay, here's a demonstration of the overhead cone speakers. The audio is currently coming from those speakers from across the room into my iPhone. I'm listening to 790 right now. You see as I tune it to needle swing. This is a digital readout on the frequency. It's uh, it's at 790 because but because it's mixing with the AM signal, it's not just a pure carrier. It's reading slightly off as the uh, audio signal mixes and changes to carry with the carrier. Here's a picture of the schematic for the unit. So here we are back on AM 1230. Uh, just a brief introduction. Um, there's so much to do and learn. Uh, and it's great fun to build these things. Sorry for being so brief. I mean, I could talk just about the coils for a couple of hours um, because there's a lot there's a lot to trying to squeeze every last ounce out of performance out of a radio that doesn't have any active power there's no batteries there's no power everything you're hearing is coming from the antenna just the power that lands into the antenna and goes to ground so anyway uh, thanks for watching I hope I've perked your interest a little Hi. In closing, I'd like to mention a few things that we completely overlook. One is uh, crystal radio contesting. Every year there's a contest that's run where uh, we try to see how many stations we can log in a one week period with just a, a, a crystal radio, no power involved, and uh, that can be fun chasing stations. 
Another thing we like to do is um, uh, chasing stations from all over the country. You can pick up stations at night on a crystal radio from across the country and log those and see how many you can get. Uh, it's challenging and fun. Um, we didn't talk about indoor antennas. I can run the crystal radio with an indoor antenna, loop antenna. We didn't talk about the, <clears throat> the quality of the sound that comes out of these radios. Very high fidelity. Um, since there's only one diode, there's really not much in the uh, RF path to uh, clip or alter the uh, audio quality in any kind of bad way. Uh, we didn't talk about diodes. We didn't talk about impedance matching. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that you can uh, learn about and have fun with it. Uh, finally, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't give credit to a few folks who've helped me along the way. Uh, one is Dave Schmarter. You can find his website at makearadio.com. He's built uh, dozens and dozens of crystal radios, all very fine workmanship, and he's been a real inspiration. Uh, the guy's pretty, pretty talented. Uh, another guy I'd like to give credit to is Mike Tuggle. Uh, he uh, helped on the antenna tuner front end. It's a series parallel tuner that tunes fairly sharply for what we're doing. Um, you can Google uh, Tuger, tu Tuggle Tuner. <laughs> uh, that's Tuggle Tuner if you'd like to look into that. Uh, ben Tung is another guy I'd like to give credit to. He's the theory guru. If you're into math and that kind of thing, or the theory of radio, uh, look at Ben Tung's website on crystal radios. You'd be impressed. Uh, finally, uh, my mentor, Ron Young, has encouraged me over the years to uh, build these things. And uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, Ron's call sign is W8RJL. He's uh, a good friend. And um, finally, the fine folks at TARPA, that's the Tidewater Amateur I'm sorry, Tidewater Antique Radio and Phonograph Association. Um, they uh, are excellent caretakers and historians of our old radios. So thanks again for watching. This is Chris, over and out.